we sent the USS Abraham Lincoln over to stand guard um, against Iran. This is coming from Iran. Tell me, first of all, the high-ranking Hamas operative that was killed, responsible for transmi- uh, transferring money from Iran to Hamas. What do we know about that? This is, this is all linked. This is all linked. So um, that that specific high-ranking commander, just like you said, that's his job is to take the funds that come over from Iran and give that to, to, to Hamas, give it to Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and a number of other groups that Iran supports in Israel. It's very telling that uh, Islamic Jihad, that's the main Iranian group that's in uh, Gaza, um, that they're the ones that started all this. They started it. They knew exactly what was going to happen. They knew Israel gonna re- was, going, was going to retaliate. Hamas then responds with overwhelming force. Like you said, that's conservative is 600 rockets. It's probably closer to 700. Absolutely insane in a two-day period. A two-day period. Now, as soon as this aircraft carrier went into the Gulf, I was like, I know exactly what this is. The rumors were saying that uh, we decided to do this because we had gotten word that Iran was planning attacks on either U.S. forces or U.S. allies. That, to me, says I, uh, Israel all the way. They knew uh, what the strategy is. And the strategy is good, uh, Glenn, for, for attacking Israel. It, it was, should have worked during the Six-Day War. And it's... All the Arab nations surrounding them, they have more people than Israel does. It's a war of attrition. So if they hit them from multiple sides, from multiple borders, Israel shouldn't be able to hold. In fact, it should, Israel should not be here today. It right. was divine from, intervention from in my mind. Yeah, from 67, it was divine in- intervention. There was no way. W- what do you think could hold it this time? Besides divine intervention. Divine intervention or the United States government going in and helping them. Because no one else will. Absolutely no one else will. And now is the people that you were just quoting are actually trying to change that. They're trying to change public sentiment so that they don't have the social contract to go in and, and defend Israel. But um, I, I, it's, it's looking like we have the administration in place, at least for now, that's going to you know take a stand with them. But if we wouldn't show them that we were willing to put overwhelming force in the area to respond, because that's what this, what this was. I guarantee if this would have escalated to the next level, if we would have set this one out, then I, I can almost guarantee that Hezbollah would have been, they probably already had the orders. If nothing happens, if no carrier moves into the area, Hezbollah moves down into Israel, moves down into Gaza, and then this becomes that war, just like the Six-Day War, multiple different borders, and Israel shouldn't be able to defend that. Egypt wouldn't be in on it, though, this time. E- Egypt would not be. Would not. Uh, Saudi Arabia wouldn't be in on it this no. time. No, no. Uh, so you would really only have what? Maybe Syria, Turkey, Lebanon, Tur- Iran. Yep, T- Turkey, which is a very, very strange bedfellows because like uh, the the alliances are different now. Uh, Turkey's Muslim Brotherhood, but they also hate Iran. I don't know. I I, I have a hard time thinking that they would all come together uh, in a six day war type scenario. But really, that it would be hard enough fighting with Hezbollah. I mean, th- consider Israel's already fought a war with Hezbollah and it didn't go very well. Did not go very well. And they've had years and years and years to get the funding, to get the, the weapons. That's why the blockade is there. And that's something that Ilhan Omar or Rashid Tlaib are not even talking about. They keep calling this an occupation force. There are no occupying troops in Gaza. There are none. Yeah, you know, when, when Rashid said, when, you know, when are we going to stop dehumanizing Palestinians? Well, I don't know. I'm not dehumanizing Palestinians. I don't know anybody who does dehumanize Palestinians. Hamas ex- does. Except yeah. the Palestinians and Iran. They don't care about the Palestinians. Yeah, it seems like when you want to strap a, a vest that explodes on a person, you're kind of dehumanizing them. Even if it is to kill when, the Jews and that wonderful, glorious goal you have. When you push mothers and babies to the front line, yeah. knowing that they're going to be slaughtered. When you put them next to the, the top terror targets to make sure yeah. that, you know, you to kill them, you have to also have other casualties that they can then exploit. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, who's who's you, dehumanizing these people? Yeah, and you know, when they when they when they when their leader when the Hamas leadership when they fire rockets or when they make a decision from their headquarters, they know exactly what's going to happen. They know a retaliation is going to come. They know uh, a bomb is going to come from the IDF. What they do is they immediately abandon those uh, those buildings and they go into the the civilian buildings next door, so that if when you hear that civilians die, that's by design. Mm-hmm. They do that on purpose, and they know how the media is going to cover it, and the media falls for it every frigging time. It's absolutely. I don't ugh. see here. Here's where I, I think this is falling apart. I think, I think the Democrats are so overplaying their hand 
Uh, and not by choice. I mean, did you see Nancy Pelosi come out this weekend going, you know, we really need to kind of stay in the middle ground. I don't know if you if you saw this, but she's like, you know, we should be, you know, we we really need to kind of remain moderate in the middle. Uh, what she's saying is we should just be crazy progressives, <laughs> not Marxist social socialist Islamicists, because that's where they're headed. And I just I I can't believe that the American people are are with open borders. They are with Islamic terror. I just don't see them standing with care. I do see them caring about things like the Uyghurs. You know, I, I tweeted something last night when I was going through all of this. I'm I'm for the Uyghurs. I think what's happening in China to the Uyghurs is an atrocity. Where's care on that one? It's an absolute atrocity what's going on. Uh, I mean, they could all be killed before America even or the world even wakes up. They are liquidating people in China, this entire Muslim community. And I'm all for standing up and making sure. I mean, I was very disappointed when Donald Trump took that off the table. In his negotiations uh, this weekend, he said he wasn't going to he wasn't going to push for the uh, Uyghurs' uh, release. I, I have to tell you, I was really disappointed in that. So how can I have Islamophobia if I'm for the Islamic people in China, but I'm against the people, the Palestinians, because of the way they behave? They're being used. And they're being used by the Muslim Brotherhood. They're being used by Hezbollah. They're being used by everybody, including Talib, including Omar. They're being used. I feel bad for the Palestinian people, but I am not for their, their cause because their cause is driven by terrorists.